Когда-то я хотела спасти мир. Но чем ты к нему ближе, тем отчетливее видишь великую тьму. Какая у тебя миссия? Остановить войну. Какую войну? Которая положит конец войнам. Я не могу оставаться в стороне, пока погибают невинные. Будь осторожна, Диана. Кто эта женщина? Она... мой секретарь, сэр. Она очень хороший секретарь. Защищать мир — наша священная миссия. Этим я собираюсь заняться. Как женщина может в этом сражаться? Сражаться? Мы используем наши принципы, хотя в целом я была бы не против врезать кому-нибудь при случае. Hey, YouTubers, happy 2017. So new Wonder Woman footage, just hyping up the God Killer sword, some of the action of the film. So I'm going to explain like what that is because it's a really cool weapon. There is a new round of the Flash Ring giveaway too. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber, leave a comment on this video. Be sure to click that bell to enable alerts so you don't miss anything. Most of this is just hyping up like the crazy action of the film. Most international trailers, whichever country they're dropping them in or whichever language they're in, tend to hype the action just because you don't need to speak a foreign language to understand Wonder Woman stealing the God Killer sword or punching someone in the face or just spinning all over the screen kicking so much ass. So thankfully we get some new footage, but this is cut out of order. Like you see Wonder Woman watching Steve Trevor's plane crash at the beginning, but then it jumps all the way to the German soldiers rushing the Amazons on the beach, which seems like it happens much later in the film. The only reason for the Germans, the Kaiser, this is World War I, so we're talking about the Kaiser here, to want Themyscira is because of some resource that the Amazons might have. They do have a mother box in their possession, but they haven't really explained how much of the dark side war they're going to explain during the Wonder Woman movie. Within the context of the DCEU, we know that there are three mother boxes on the Earth. We saw one in the Justice League trailer, and we saw Lex Luthor learning about them at the end of Batman v Superman. That thing that Lex Luthor's getting all that information from is supposed to be Steppenwolf, or at least like the Kryptonian computer's Etch-a-Sketch version of Steppenwolf. So this is really like the Kryptonian ship speaking to him. This isn't actually Steppenwolf speaking to him. He's learning based on the Kryptonian database about Darkseid and all these other galactic threats. So that kind of informs his character a little bit, but they cut that out of the main movie that everybody saw in theaters. It's in the Ultimate Edition though, so we'll circle back around to that because that explains why Lex Luthor was being so crazy in the Batman v Superman movie. But aside from like the brief explainer that Zack Snyder gave us a long time ago about the Earth's history with Darkseid, we don't really know how that's going to carry forward into the other spin-off films. Presumably, we'll see another mother box show up during the Aquaman movie because there are a couple other ancient races of people, including the Amazons and the Atlanteans, that would have been around for the first big fight with Darkseid. So it's not like the German troops want to take Themyscira just because they need a new vacation spot. There's got to be some sort of resource 
that's going to help them conquer the world. In Legend of a Mother Box would just be one of those things. But that's, you know, Danny Houston is like the big villain of the film. So whatever the reason for them attacking, it would flow from him. But it seems like it's happening after all these other weapon tests that happen later in the trailer. Like we slowly see the Germans experimenting with poison gas. That's really kind of like mustard gas. That was like the real big chemical weapon of World War I. It would like completely scar people's faces. It was really bad even for people wearing gas masks. So that's just what they're implying here. And I know a lot of people are wondering who this person is here because people are like, is Ares in the film? He's like Wonder Woman's biggest villain. I don't know that Danny Houston is playing Ares in disguise. He could totally be Ares, but it seems like he's just a really evil German officer right now. This looks like it's Dr. Poison. Just because Dr. Poison is a big Wonder Woman villain, her family has a long history of fighting against the Amazons in the comics, so she has a big grudge against them. So you kind of get the idea just, you know, from these trailers that the Amazons don't want to have anything to do with the outside world. Like Hippolyta standing next to Wonder Woman here doesn't want to have anything to do with Steve Trevor. Wonder Woman herself, and I'll explain the God Killer sword in a second because there's like a really badass quote from Athena on it. Wonder Woman herself has to defy orders because it actually kind of flows from the quote on the sword here. You can't really read it in these trailers but it's actually a quote they borrow from Joseph Campbell, and it's from Mysteries of the Feminine Divine, and it reads, Life is killing life all the time, and so the goddess kills herself in the sacrifice of her own animal. So the goddess it's referring to is Athena. Athena's animal form is like a deer or a stag. So it's sort of a lament that as you kill other people, you're also killing yourself a little bit. So it's like the tragedy of war, which flows a lot from what's happening with World War I. So they're trying to get really meta with the war theme of the film. Wonder Woman is a warrior. She's like one of the biggest warriors in the Justice League. Even though everybody's a badass in the Justice League, Wonder Woman herself walks around carrying a shield and a sword. So the sword itself does have special properties. It's called the God Killer Sword because it's Athena's sword, but also as you use it to take life, you're killing the goddess Athena. So you kind of have to imagine that Wonder Woman is really sad at the thought of having to kill people. So they believe all life is sacred, which is why she believes Steve Trevor and wants to help him end World War I. But because of where we meet her in Batman v Superman, we know that that probably doesn't end well. Just because even though she's been living in the real world, she's retreated from public life since the end of this Wonder Woman movie, wherever this leaves off back in 1918. So like the way Zack Snyder explained it is that when we meet Wonder Woman in Batman v Superman, she's kind of been leading a very private life for the past hundred years. So it just implies something really terrible happens at the end of this movie, probably to Steve Trevor, just because he's the love interest. And her whole mission is to try and bring peace to the world. There's something I'd like to show you. Sorry. Now, some scholars insist that it never happened, but I believe it's the action perfectly in keeping with a king who was also a psychopathic killer. For me, it's the culmination of 40 years curating, and I can't believe it, but I finally got it here. It's the sword of Alexander. It's the blade that cut the Gordian knot. It's a triumph. Yes. Enjoy. Thank you. It's a fake. The real one was sold in 98 on the black market. Now it hangs and... Over the bed of the Sultan of Hajar. It was actually this big thing last year where like the character Wonder Woman became this big figure at the United Nations. Wonder Woman herself as a character is a peacemaker, even though she'll totally kick people's asses. But Linda Carter and Gal Gadot actually did this big United Nations thing. So that had a lot to do with the 75th anniversary of the Wonder Woman character. So I'll be really interested to see, you know, with the political climate, what it is, how they try to use the Wonder Woman character to market the film internationally. Like if everyone's saying that 2016 was the year of zero chill, then maybe Wonder Woman will try to change that in 2017. 
But I know a lot of you are asking about like post credits. Like we have Justice League coming in November. Does that mean that there's going to be a Justice League post credit in present day at the end of the Wonder Woman movie? So they don't really show you in this trailer, but in the previous trailers, we actually see her walking by the Louvre in present day in France. So the Diana Prince persona that she walks around using during present day is an antiquities dealer. So it sounds like either at the beginning of the film or at the end of the film, there's a remembrance of things that happen and then they flash back. But either way, the film does take place during present day and then back during the past. Most of the film is back during the past here, during this World War I period. So what's going to happen later tonight is they just confirm that Doctor Strange is going to be an important part of Thor Ragnarok. Now, we knew he was going to be somewhere in there, but I'll do a video explaining what's going on with that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Benedict Cumberbatch, Chris Hemsworth, and Mark Ruffalo, the Hulk, Doctor Strange and Thor teaming up. It's going to be awesome. So I will say congratulations to this week's Flash Reading Giveaway winner, Luis Diaz. Please private message me on the back end of my channel so I can get your contact details. There is a new round that started in this video, so I'll just announce the winner the next time I post a DC video, which will probably be The Flash. That should be Wednesday morning. While you guys wait for that to post, you can click here for my 2017 hype trailer for like all the big stuff that's coming, and you can click here to learn why everyone's freaking out about the Batman movie. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Let's high five. I'll see you guys tonight.